Alright guys, so what a mess, what an absolute mess. And let's tally the carnage over the past two days. Over $6.4 trillion in the markets were wiped out. Investors, they lost their shirts thanks to the perfect storm. We had the yen carry trade unwinding, the AI bubble popping, and a US slowdown coming. Things aren't looking good at all. We can't look to Yellen or the Fed for the truth. Back in 2007, just before the collapse, both told us that everything was absolutely fine. Yellen saw a risk of inflation and a soft landing, and that was months just before the biggest recession since the Great Depression. And now we have a bright indicator flashing red. It's telling us that a recession is likely on its way, and yes, we are talking about the infamous yield curve. Over the past 24 months, the US yield curve has been inverted. Short-term rates were higher than long-term bonds, but a critical benchmark has been crossed. We are now past the financial Rubicon. The spread between the 2-year Treasury yield and the 10-year has normalized. It has gone from negative territory to positive 1.5 basis points. We cannot overstate how important this is, how pivotal this sudden reinversion is. Rates normalizing sounds like the economy is back on track, but it heralds a bloodbath ahead. Money is pouring into long-term treasuries more than short-term bonds. Investors they are willing to lock in their money at only 3.7% for the next 10 years, and it tells us the level of fear in the markets. People are expecting a crash in the market, so they rather lock in a low rate and lose out to inflation. Better than holding on to stocks that could crash by 10 or even 20%. And here's where things get dicey. When the yield curve inverts, it likely signals a recession. And this is when long-term rates fall much lower than short-term rates. Since 1980, 5 out of the 6 recessions were preceded by inversion of at least 20 days. 2020's inversion lasted only 6 days. So we have a 100% track record here. But the trigger point comes when the yield starts to reinvert back to positive territory. It tells us that a recession is nearing, and unless the Fed does something drastic like print a ton of money, this might be the end of the line. When the yield curve normalizes back, a recession happens within 12 to 24 months. It happened back in 2006, the 2000s, 1981, and 1973. The blue arrows here all show the yield curve reinverting from negative territory back to the positive. We have had the longest inversion of 24 months thus far. So it's anyone's guess how fast or quick the recession might come. In the same breath, we have no idea how severe or shallow the crash will be as well. But this reinversion is a signal to be cautious and that the headwinds aren't over yet. Looking at just the chart isn't enough. We need to put our ear on the ground and really observe the fundamentals of the US economy. We need to ask ourselves one big question. Why is the flow of money rushing to bonds? If the economy is expanding, we should all be risk on. After all, Q2 GDP came in at 2.8%, didn't it? Bond yields across the board, they're collapsing. The 2-year is down 80 basis points. The 5-year has crashed. The 10-year fell by 60 points as well. This sudden fall is a symptom of an economy that's weakening. People, they are all waking up from a collective dream. The Fed is about to give the markets a rude awakening because rates have to come down in September. It's a near certainty now. A week ago, the jobs numbers came out. Unemployment went up to 4.3%, triggering the sum rule, which is yet another recession indicator. Payrolls were a disaster as well. It is now on a downtrend hitting a new low of 114,000 jobs. Then we had the Intel layoffs. Despite billions in grants from the Chips Act, the tech giant is about to fire 15,000 people. There's no doubt that the US economy is slowing down fast. And if we ever needed more evidence, we just need to look at the totality of businesses in the US. Chapter 11 bankruptcies are on the rise. Filings have reached the highest level in more than a decade. In fact, it tracks back all the way to 2011. It's even worse than the 2020 lockdowns, and that was a disaster when half the world closed down. There's enormous pressure building in the system, a ton of which we just can't see yet. 
But if companies go under, layoffs are going to rise. And when more people are unemployed, spending is going to crater. It's not rocket science. John Deere is a historic American company selling farming equipment. They are laying off US workers as they shift manufacturing back to Mexico. Mind you, this isn't a high growth tech company. Farming is supposed to be a resilient industry. But even they are facing a demand collapse. Despite making $10 billion last year and likely $7 billion this year, John Deere will lay off over a thousand workers. Welcome to corporate America, guys. When profits are about to nosedive, workers are the first to go. So the economic cool down is here and is getting serious. But we have to add in another black swan that's still circling the global economy. And once again, it involves Japan. Now, over the past week, we saw the great unwinding of the yen carry trade. People were borrowing in the Japanese yen at low rates to buy higher yielding assets elsewhere. But as JP Morgan puts it, this big sell off is only half complete. There's more downside to go, and the bloodbath isn't over just yet. Here's the issue no one really knows how much speculation is involved in the carry trade. Investors could be borrowing tons of yen using leverage to buy up risk assets like the S&P, tech stocks, and even Bitcoin. But things are very different now. The yen has soared by 11% against the dollar. So there's a big scramble by everyone involved to sell off their dollar assets. It's time, time to buy back the yen to pay off their loans. The biggest casualties here are the Japanese banks. They were clobbered and this carry trade disaster might actually trigger systemic risk trade from Tokyo. They have lost an incredible $85 billion in value and it's not a surprise here. Japanese banks invested a lot in bonds and they're extremely interest rate sensitive. Like all other banks, they issue loans. So the BOJ hiking rates would actually be a good thing. But JGB yields are declining and there's another problem festering. And that is the overseas portfolio of these banks. If you thought the Nikkei imploding was bad, just look at how bad the collapse is for Japanese banks. As a whole, the banks fell by over 25%. For MUFG, the collapse was incredible. Their shares plunged by nearly 30%. And that's how much damage was done in less than a week. You might be thinking, what does this have to do with a global implosion? This next fact is going to reveal it all and why we have to pay attention. The carry trade disaster could have a second act. According to Bloomberg, Many Japanese banks generate over 50% of their profit from revenue abroad and this was helping them achieve record profits this fiscal year. So now you can see the systemic risk that's actually building in the system. We have no idea how exactly the banks generate their overseas revenue. Is it all from loans or are some bonds involved? More importantly, are they participants in the yen carry trade as well? Did they borrow a bunch of Japanese yen at low interest rates? to buy up a ton of US Treasury bonds. Of course, one Japanese bank definitely bought a lot of US debt to generate income. And we are talking about the famous Norin Chukin Bank. Japan's biggest agricultural bank just posted a 413 billion yen loss from their rates bets going bad. And let's recap how they got into trouble. A few years back, the bank borrowed a ton of short-term money. They borrowed at near zero rates and bought 10-year treasuries yielding 2%. But as the Fed hiked rates, the situation turned. Now, short-term rates are much higher than long-term bonds and the bank was losing over 1% in this particular carry trade. So they had to liquidate their positions to stem the bleeding. The issue now is how many banks in Japan or around the world are participants of the yen carry trade. Because if the Fed slams rates down in September, this could cause another blow-up. When the Fed cuts rates, this introduces two deadly effects. The first is US bonds, obviously the yield will go down. And this would reduce the interest rate differential between US debt and Japanese government bonds. And this will unwind the carry trade further and cause the yen to spike up even higher. And if Japanese banks are participants, will they dump a ton of their US assets to repay these loans? The problem with the spiking yen goes beyond the carry trade. Japan's rising currency is a problem for the fourth biggest economy in the world, their own economy. If the US enters a recession, this will doom Japan's economy. 
over 30% of listed Japanese companies make their money from American customers. Dependence on China is going down and Asia is slowly trending up. However, the yen appreciating by 10% out of the blue is definitely going to crush corporate earnings. It's going to impact it. A rising yen and a weakening dollar are only going to make Japanese exports more expensive. And that's why the Nikkei had a collapse yesterday. The market was pricing this in. Now, this disaster is ironically going to help China, especially their industries are going to grow, even during a recession. The Chinese RMB has dropped by over 8% versus the yen, and this is good news for exports. As the world moves closer towards a recession, buying affordable goods becomes more important. And now that the RMB has fallen against the yen, China is now the de facto low-cost producer of the world. If there's one economy that might escape the worst effects of the recession, it might just be China. Decoupling from the West is actually helping them out. Now, can this collapse be avoided? Well, it can, but it's Japan that actually controls the levers, more specifically the Bank of Japan. Remember that the Fed can't unwind the carry trade. Cutting the benchmark rate will only make things worse and there's no way power can actually hike rates up. To restore the markets, Japan will have to undo their rate cut. The whole world is now blaming the Bank of Japan for this meltdown. No surprise here. Their rate hike was ill-timed and it really triggered the perfect storm. The BOJ won't dare to hike rates further. In fact, I won't be surprised if they get a call from Janet Yellen to do a reverse plaza accord to weaken the yen and strengthen the dollar to prevent a further implosion, a further meltdown. To save the markets at this point, Japan will need to sacrifice their currency. The yen will have to plummet to hell for a reversal. If not, things could really get nasty in the weeks and months ahead. But don't worry guys, I've heard from the second highest authority in the US that everything is absolutely fine, nothing to worry about. All that ladies and gentlemen and everyone else, that is called Bidenomics. <laughs> That is called Bidenomics, and we are very proud of Bidenomics. But let me know what you think. Is it baked into the cake? Is the US heading into a recession? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe. Be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.